Today, we're going to talk about the three types of power apps that you can build and give you some reasons why you might choose one of the three options. Hi, everybody. My name is Matt, and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about power apps and the different types of power apps that you can build. If you've ever built a power app, you might have seen that you can select several different options, and you might be confused about which ones the right option for the type of app that you want to build. This video is intended to try to help you understand the differences and why you might choose one over the other. So today we're going to be covering Canvas apps, model-driven apps, and portals. The first type of app we're going to talk about is going to be the Canvas app. And within a Canvas app, there's really three main areas or things to remember. The first of them is that it's really raw and flexible. So you really end up, when you start making a Canvas app, it's really a blank canvas for you to add drag and drop components, um, create a look that is really tailored to what you're looking for. You can have a lot of control over the interactions that users have with data and with elements within the app um, using Excel-style expressions and formulas. Um, the second thing is that a Canvas app is really the foundation for extending SharePoint. So when you're in SharePoint and you're going to edit a form, uh, a list form or a document form, and you click the little edit, edit this form button, it's what it's actually doing is opening up a specialized version of a Canvas app within Power Apps. And you can do largely the same things you could do with a traditional Canvas app using that same interface. And the last thing I want to talk about is the connections. So Canvas apps have a large variety of connections that you can uh, use, and they're really flexible. So you can connect to pretty much any type of data source you might want, whether or not it be something really advanced like SQL or CDS, or if you just want to connect to SharePoint to get some data. To give you a little better understanding of what it might look like, uh, on the screen here, this is an example uh, Canvas app that has been built. Um, you can see that there's, on the left-hand side, there's a lot of different controls and screens. So each one of these is a screen. Um, and on the right-hand side, there's a bunch of uh, actions and configurations that you can make to those controls. And just remember that um, if you're looking to build a Canvas app, it's really for when you want to have total control or as much control as possible around the experience for users, um, or when you want to extend SharePoint, or when you're looking to connect to a variety of data sources. Next, we want to talk about model-driven apps. Model-driven apps are, is, a, is a paradigm that is built squarely on the Dataverse, which the Dataverse is the new name for what used to be called the Common Data Service, or CDS. So everything related to model-driven development is all about defining the, the tables and entities within the CDS with the appropriate forms, dashboards, charts, and then surfacing them through a model-driven app that has a specific navigation and interactions with the user. So again, probably one of the most important things to remember is that uh, everything is dependent on the CDS. So again, this particular type of, uh, of app requires licensing that gives you access to the CDS or the Dataverse. Um, in addition, this type of development is also the primary way that Dynamics is extended. So if you're someone who has a Dynamics imp implementation, you may be familiar a little bit with model-driven development already. Um, or if you're not, uh, once you learn these skills, they would be directly applicable to some of the Dynamics customizations. To give you an idea of what a model-driven app might look like, uh, what we're showing you on the screen is an example model-driven application that has a dashboard, which is the main thing we're seeing here, which has main elements, so like uh, the active challenges, that's a chart um, that's been dropped onto this uh, page. That chart was again defined within a table, an entity within the Dataverse. Um, so again, everything is defined within those Dataverse uh, entities and then they're surfaced within a model-driven app. As you can see through the example, you're not gonna have the same drag and drop experience that you have with a Canvas app, but you're gonna get the benefits of configuring entities and reusing those that configuration for forms or for views over and over in potentially multiple pages or multiple, multiple model-driven applications without having to go and reconfigure it every single time. The last Power App we want to talk about is portals. Portals are different than the previous two uh, Power Apps that we talked about in that 
uh, Canvas apps and model-driven apps are for more for your internal staff to interact with the data. Portals is exclusively for external partners or external customers. And when they interact with a portal, it's gonna be very much like they're just going to a website and accessing that through a traditional URL and looking at it with, uh, from the perspective of any other public facing website that they might log on to and get access to data. So on the other side, for your internal staff, working with a portal is gonna be very similar to what they've experienced working with a model driven application or in Dynamics, because the data is all Dataverse data. So when you're configuring a form or configuring a view or a dashboard, you can then use those same things within a portal. In addition to static website content using traditional CMS methods. If you've ever built a traditional uh, portal that customers might log into, you know just how difficult it can be to get data to show up on the screen and be secured properly. A lot of that is simplified by using a portal because again, you're using the Dataverse as the back end for all of this. Another important note about Power Apps Portals is the licensing difference. In both Canvas apps and model-driven applications, you're really talking about a per-user license for your internal staff that might be using or creating the app. With the Power Apps Portal, the licensing is done in two different ways, one for authenticated users and one for unauthenticated users. And you basically pay per user per month or per day, uh, depending on whether or not it's authenticated or unauthenticated content. If you're interested in more information about Power Apps Portals, we have another video that goes into a little bit more detail and we even go through an example Power Apps Portal. If you are interested in that, check out the description, we've got a link. Hopefully this video helps you understand the different types of Power Apps available to you. If you're looking to have the most control over what you're trying to develop, you should be looking at a Canvas app. If you're working with data in the Dataverse, you should really consider a model-driven application as it'll be a little bit easier for you to reuse whatever you develop. If you need to engage with external users, customers or partners maybe, Power Apps Portals is probably the solution for you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if you wanna get notified when we release new content like this, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on my next video.